Hello everybody and welcome to another CanJS Meetup. This time I'm talking about Can Component. In this video I'm going to give an overview of Can Component, why you should use it, and then go through a hello world where I'll show most of the API points, then talk about each API in detail, and then finish with a bunch of demos. So let's get started. So you use Can Component to make widgets. And Can Component's big strength is that it combines a view and view model on custom elements. It's kind of like CanJS's version of web components that you can use in IE8. To use a Can Component, you define its behavior like this. You extend Can Component and provide it a, a tag name that component's behavior will be added to. And you can provide optionally a template that will be rendered within that element. A view model that controls the behavior of the component, local mustache helpers that are used within the template, and an events object that can be used to listen to events outside of the normal in-template event handlers. After defining a component, you can use a component just by adding a custom element to a template. And you can specify the properties and kind of pass values from your template into your component by specifying attribute values. So this might be a tabs that has a panel for each food type, which results in something like this. So why do you use components, especially over something like can control? The biggest reason is you get the benefits of using custom elements. You have initialization code all in one place. If you're used to using a control or something like a jQuery UI widget, you have to get the element in the page and then initialize the behavior on that element. A component's initialization happens all within one place. The other strength of can component is that it's provided a light DOM. The light DOM is the content inside of a component. So the tabs light DOM includes these panels, the panels light DOM includes this text inside of there. This is very friendly for designers. They can just author HTML and the component will take care of rearranging the DOM and what they provided into what's necessary for that component. The other strength of Can Component is that it forces you to build things the right way. And that is the model view view model approach, especially in the case of Can Component, the view and view model approach. What I mean by this is that Can Component encourages you to use the model view view model approach by making it simple to wire up a view model and a view. A view model defines the logic of a widget. For example, a tabs component might have methods to add and remove and activate a panel. A tabs view expresses the view model in the DOM. By separating the view model from the view, the MVVM approach is easily testable. And the final reason to use can component is that it's just flexible. If there's things that CanJS's view cannot, if there's things that CanJS's view cannot express, such as currently animations, you can always get to the actual DOM and manipulate that with can components internal can control, which is really, as we'll see, the events object. So enough talk, let's see how you use it, and we'll show of all things the hello world example. So here, for setup, I've loaded jQuery and I've loaded can.js that uses jQuery and I've included the can stash templating engine. What I'm doing right now is I'm rendering a view. I'm loading a view, the app view, and rendering it into another element, which is out. So if I put in something like hello world right here, it will show hello world to the user. So now I'm going to add a custom element to the page that's called 
Hello world. And if I save that, you can see nothing is showing up, but there is a hello world element in the page. But because I haven't defined a hello world component, this hello world does nothing. We can actually see that there's no component for this element by getting the hello world element and trying to read its view model. In this case, it's scope, which will return undefined. Now let's define a hello world can component. So to define a can component, I'll extend can component and give it a tag name of hello world. And I'll save my page. And just by doing that, we still see nothing, but I know my hello world has a component initialized on it because its scope provides a value. Now to show off a nice feature of the development build, if I change the development build and remove the can component, we actually get a warning. no custom element found for hello world. Now let's get hello world to say hello world. To do that, I'm gonna add a template and give it an h1 that says hello world. You can see here, the DOM has been changed to have the hello world element and the contents of the template rendered directly within it. So let's see what would happen if I put in some source content or light DOM inside of our components tag. All right, goodbye. If I do that and refresh, you can see it still says hello world because the original source content is just replaced by the contents of the component's template. But can component lets us reposition that source or light DOM content wherever we want by using the content element. So the content element will take the source content and reposition it within the components template, which you could be thought of as the shadow DOM, even though it's not shadowy in the case of can component. So now it says goodbye world. The next part of a can component is its scope. Its scope defines the view model of the component which is almost always a can map. So if I create a new can.map with a subject property, that map is used to render the template. So in this case, I will write subject here, and this should say goodbye earth. Now let's change this component to, on a click, change the subject from Earth to World. To do that, I'll use the events object. And I can write event handlers in here, so just click. And when clicked, I'm going to change the scope's subject to World. Now typically you don't want every hello world element to share the same scope instance, the same instance of a cam map, the same view model. 
to see why, if I change this, if I create multiple Hello Worlds, and reload my page, when I click one of them, both are going to change their subject because there's one can map instance shared by every component. To change this, I'm going to define a view model for Hello World. To create an observable view model, I'm going to extend can map. Every instance of hello world view model is going to have a default subject of Earth. Now I'll pass that constructor function to hello world scope. What will happen is every time a hello world element is found on the page, a new instance of Hello World view model will be created and used to render the template. So now if I save this and refresh the page, these are independent Hello World components. Now this is very nice defining a external view model because it's very easily unit testable, but can component provides a shorthand. If you provide scope, a plain JavaScript object, that will be automatically used to extend can map and then instances of that can map constructor function will be used as the scope uses the view model of can component. So these two things are the exact same. If I save and refresh, the same behavior works. If possible, you want to avoid using event handlers in the events object. Instead, it's much better to use declarative in-template event handlers, such as can click. And to point that to a method on the scope on the view model. So in this case, on click, I'll call update subject. And I'll add an update subject method. That will change the attribute, the subject attribute, to world. And now I can remove this events object. In part two of this video, I'll go in depth in each of CAN Components APIs.